subscapularis muscle, the often forgotten rotator cuff. What do we mean by that? Oh, there's four rotator cuff muscles. Everybody wants to talk to supraspinatus, that little guy up on top that gets kind of rubbed or ground down, creates a lot of that pain. When I lift up my hand or reach out in front, it radiates down my shoulder. That's the one everybody wants to talk about. It's very, very common, but it's not the only one. We have the subscapularis, so it starts on the front of the scapula or your shoulder blade. There's a muscle on front and there's a couple on the back. The one in front is cutting through the armpit to attach up on the humerus or arm, and it's helping keeping that ball and socket. It's actually one of the most important for keeping that ball and socket in the spot they should be. And when it gets damaged or just not firing like it should, it's going to be one of those that lead to a change in the system and eventually leading to wearing and grinding down that supraspinatus tendon causing the pain everybody's thinking about. So that's where I say that subscapularis is that middle child. The often forgotten, the one we don't talk about is there, but we just don't do what we should for them, at least according to my brother, the middle child. The subscapularis muscle during selective rehabilitation exercises reviews what are the best exercises for the subscap. And to really get this thing firing, because of those zones, and we saw how the scapula is fairly long and the different angles to the shoulder require us to change our humerus position. So we really do need to change how our arm is and the angles associated to work that entire muscle group. So we need to change that abduction. So how the arm comes away from the body to hit the different parts of the muscle to engage what we need. But we also need to work on some of the push up plus and diagonal exercises to really engage and firing patterns we need from both functional and a single muscle point of view. So, here again, we see the subscapularis, we see how long and tall it is and the direction of fibers from the muscles that start at the bottom that angle up is very different than the muscles that start on the top of the scapula and cut over to the arm. You know, when it gets injured, it causes this vague pain across the front of the shoulder, a little bit in the back, somewhat down the arm, can kind of skip over to the wrist. And we get weakness with activity, but it's not the sharpest, most stabbing pain, which is why we kind of fight our way through things. It's very vague. And it's kind of hard to test out sometimes too, which is often why it's missed and more importantly why people just don't look for it because it's just harder to find. The different orthopedic tests, movement tests we have aren't great at saying, yes, you definitely have a subscap problem. By the time people are coming in, they've got a couple different problems and we kind of forget to look at the subscap. Sometimes on MRI, we'll see um, sprains and strains across it. Most times though, it's just not bad enough to be seen visually or we're surprised when, hey, I've had two or three of the rotator cuff muscles injured, including the subscap. So when that muscle gets hurt, gives this pain radiation pattern, you see that redness, that vagueness to it. In these spots, the difference between that and having tissue problems at those areas are when I poke and prod where the red is, I can't reproduce the pain. If I get up in that armpit and that subscap and I hit the spot, that'll reproduce the pain rating down the arm. And that's when we know we have a subscap problem, we have to work on it. But like I said, that's not fun for both you or me from the standpoint of the only way to get to that muscle on front of the subscap is we really got to kind of work it open, open that area up, reach up so it feels like I'm reaching your armpit, which most people don't enjoy, and then dig around at the sore spot. So many times in treatment, we'll say, hey, go get the massage therapist, let them do the work across the whole arm shoulder because we have a whole bunch of muscles that affect how the shoulder moves, but also spending time working that subscap, they're gonna do a better job, especially with the time frame involved. We wanna work on stretching, so we wanna open up that shoulder using the door frame exercises. If we move our hand at a clock type angle, you know, from the six o'clock, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, we're gonna stretch different parts of the subscap and shoulder. And then as the study referenced, we have to change the humeral angle. So that arm has to be different positions to engage the subscap. So we wanna work on internal rotation with the arm at different angles. I like the ball on the wall. It's an easy way to start, especially if we have pain with the band, or if we just kinda of can't get comfortable or we wanna hike that shoulder too much. We can use the ball for isometric exercises and eventually getting the more and more motion and movement. We can build up. So the article talked about that push up plus we're trying to open those scapula. So we're doing a normal push-up, but we're really trying to pull the scapula away from the spine and then pull it back in. Really making a greater motion and movement and exaggeration to really engage 
the scapular stabilizers, which is important for the subscapularis muscle. We can do the push-up plus going from that bench that we just saw to on the ground with an unstable environment, putting a ball underneath our feet to finally doing that onto an exercise ball. And then we can do the chops and rotational angles from the bridge position, engaging the core pelvis, working with the subscap and the scapular stabilizers. And doing push-ups and planks on an exercise ball is so much tougher of a shoulder exercise than people give it credit for until they try. But if you can do the push-up plus on this and keep up a fair number of reps, it tells us that your upper extremity is doing better and better. We can also change that if the other exercises aren't working is shift from sitting on a ball, working a rotational diagonal where we're trying to train that core and the pelvis and core to work with the scapula to help stabilize our arm. Flex bars are an easy way to, to build into this. So we can start by sitting the feet nice wide apart for a stable base and then eventually narrowing our feet closer and closer together to make the exercise harder, eventually getting on the one foot. In the meantime, we're taking that rubber flex bar and shaking it. There's a little bit of a recoil. So that eccentric input into the arm muscles that have to absorb it are able to get challenged, but not overwhelmed. And we increase the position of the muscle being utilized by the angle of the arm, but also how hard we're shaking that flex bar for the stimulus back towards the muscles. And then we can even shift to kettlebells or rotational from different positions to help train the system better. And a shoulder many times is getting injured because we're not stabilizing. The system isn't working together. We're trying to use the wrong muscle groups to solve the problem. So that's where we always go back to, yes, we want to get the sore spot better. We want to get the subscap, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, the teres minor muscles improved. But we also want to make sure that base foundation is where it should be. So that's scapular stabilization. You're hearing more and more people talk about not stabilizing the scapula leading to shoulder injuries. Well, it's definitely true. If you can't stabilize the scapula where the muscles are starting, then you can't control forces and function. So it's much like trying to shoot a cannon off a canoe. Without a stable platform, scapula, you can't do what you want with the arm. We're going to cause problems. So work on stabilizing the scapula so that we're shooting that cannon back off a stable platform. So there's thanks for listening to this information. We have much, much more on shoulder and scapular treatments on our website. And we hope this information has been valuable. Like and follow us for more in the future. Thanks and have a great day.